Hello and welcome everybody to the introduction session for Developer Students Club at the University of Melbourne. My name is Zakaria and I am the DSC lead for this year. Uh, before we begin, I would like to thank everyone for sparing their time to be with us, with us here today to learn more about DSC and the amazing schedule we have set up. And I know that some of you might be here for the prizes at the end, but everyone's presence is highly appreciated. And one thing I wanted to let everyone know, if you have any specific questions for me, just send them to me individually in the Zoom chat and I'll be happy to be answer them at the end so that there's no disturbances. And if you have any general questions, just, just ask in the general chat and one of our team members, one of the people with the DSE background will be happy to answer. So let's, Let's get into it. This is our schedule for today. We will be going through what is DSE. We will be introducing our team at the University of Melbourne. We'll be showing our goals and then giving you a quick tour of our workshop schedule and then a quick Q&A and then followed up by a guest lecture from Google developer expert Max Sim. So we'll be introducing Flutter and showing you the amazing stuff you can do with Flutter, and then wrapping it all up with a quick trivia. And then, of course, there are prizes at the end, so hopefully more people participate. So what is a Developer Student Club? Developer Student Club is a Google Developers program aimed at helping students bridge that gap between theory and practice. So they basic, so we do this through hands-on workshops. Um, we do projects. And the, there's lots of advantages of joining the Developer Students Club. You get to meet, so you get to meet other mind-like people, passionate people who will be working towards actually learning new technologies. And then you also get to apply um, all the stuff you've learned through doing projects. And these projects will be focused on like real life scenarios will be talking to companies in our local community and then asking for if they want us to do any projects. So it's a great chance for everyone to actually practice those practical skills that you actually need um, after university. This is a quick representation of all the developer students club around the world. As you can see, this is the first year in Australia, so there's not much at the moment, uh, but it has been going on all around the world. Uh, and so we're happy to see Australia uh, being part of the Developer Students Club community. I just wanted to quickly show you the, this website. So this gives you more information about what DSC is. So this is the website here. You can check out, this is Developer Students Club platform. Here you can check out all upcoming events near you or even from, um, from the other side of the world. Um, we can filter them according to different Google topics and there's always lots of events happening from all around the world. Um, this is the map I showed you guys. Um, so you can check uh, basically they're, they're available all around the world and here they're filtered by region. So if you want to find the University of Melbourne, they're found in Asia and you scroll all the way to the bottom and you should be able to see us here. And we'll be uploading our, all our events here. And you can find our Facebook page, our LinkedIn page, or even send us an email here. And so you'll be able to see all our upcoming events here. And if you join the DSC team, you'll be put up on the DSC platform. I'm gonna go back to the slides. Cool, so if you wanna check out that platform, it's available on this link. So these are the different Google technologies available. We have stuff from Android, Firebase, Flutter Cloud. Most of this stuff isn't taught at university, so that's why we'll be hosting workshops on trying to get most of these new technologies in the hands of the university students. So if any of these really excite you, uh, DSC would be a great thing to join. And then at the end, we at the end of the DSC year, which is around, I guess, March, April, uh, we get a chance to participate in the annual solution challenge. So developer student clubs from all around the world identify a local problem in their community and then using one of one, at least one of the Google technologies stated above, they work towards a solution for that problem. Um, and 
there will be a demo session soon on this, which is a really bad time for Australian viewers. It's 1 to 3 a.m. But once it is um, uh, uploaded on YouTube, we'll be sharing it, a link to it so everyone can have a more better understanding what this animal solution challenge is. And of course, the winners have great opportunities for mentoring, for a customized swag kit, and they can also show what they built um, to Googlers and developers all around the world. And the best thing for a prize for grand prize winners, they get a trip to Sunnyvale, California, which is pretty exciting. Uh, so if that excites, if that motivates you more, uh, do be sure to fill out the forms that I'll provide at the end. This is some inspiration from uh, different people, different things Developer Students Club have done in the past at the Annual Solution Challenge. Uh, we have a deaf student who made an Android app develop, uh, Android app for her community, which is pretty exciting. Uh, we have this Developer Student Club in Ghana who made an AR navigation app. So what they identified was when first year university students come in, they, they have some difficulty identifying um, their classes. So they made this AR navigation app, um, which I think they also extended it to their local mall so people could have more, uh, people have less difficulty in finding where they wanted to go. And we also have this developer student club in Uganda who made this app using Firebase for better tracking of vaccinations so they could improve healthcare. And actually Samuel will be coming in the future to give us a talk about what his DSE has been up to, which is pretty exciting. So I, just, so I was really inspired by the deaf student making an Android app. So I just wanted to quickly show what she did. It's a quick video. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Sorry. Oops. Awalnya Hastu bukan merupakan suara yang percaya diri Namun setelah dia ikut DSC Dia menjadi lebih percaya diri Dan lebih tertarik untuk mendalami skill Di bidang pemrograman Android saya bangga dengan Hastu karena selama Hastu Joy di DSC, dia memiliki progres yang cukup signifikan. I hope that really inspired lots of you people lots of people out there and it was really inspiring for me as well um her learning android without like as even though she had that hurdle she was able to work for her community so it's really inspirational and i hope it also inspired lots of people uh with that said um i like once with that said i'd like to introduce my team who have been working really hard throughout the last couple of weeks to come up with an amazing schedule for the semester and we'll also be working really hard in the future to make sure they can bring you the best events possible. Our goals for this semester will be focusing on the basics of machine learning and the basics 
of uh, Flutter. So with that said, I'll introduce uh, Rakshit from the machine learning team to give you a quick introduction to the machine learning schedule and followed by Andy will give you a quick introduction of the Flutter schedule. Hey guys, I'm Rakshit. So this will be a machine learning schedule for this semester. Our machine learning workshops are going to take place on each Wednesday from week four. So for weeks four and five, we'll be going to the basics like NumPy, Pandas, and basics of Python. And later on during week six and seven, we'll be going through regression models like linear regression, logistic regression, and so on. And yes, we get to predict stuff CA. And then for week eight, we will be going through classification models. And later on during week nine, we'll be going to the optimization techniques. And now Andy will be letting you know the of Flutter schedule. Thanks, Rakshit. Um, hi guys, I'm Andy, and I'm very excited to announce that um, this semester we'll be teaching Flutter. Um, on the right, you can see our schedule. They'll be running every week, Thursday afternoon. And through these workshops, we hope to teach you some foundations of how to build a Flutter application and then introduce two big projects to wrap all these concepts into a real application. And that, yeah. the workshops will be a live coding session where you can follow along. And the first few weeks will consist of basic concepts such as widgets. We'll then go and teach some other simple things like animations in Flutter. And then we'll be showing you guys how to code some applications in Flutter such as the Vision Challenge and the 2048 app. So we, we hope to see you guys at our workshop. Thanks, Zach. Thank you guys. Thank you, Rakshit and Andy for that amazing tour of our schedule. Um, I hope that also other people are excited to do, um, to learn this new stuff. And if you have any other suggestions, do be sure to fill in the suggestion form at the end. Um, so that is all for the introduction. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to ask them before we get to our guest lecture. And if you want to join the core team, you can go to this link to join the core team. And if you have any suggestions on how we can improve um, or any other suggestions in general, um, just fill out this general uh, the suggestion form. And if if you have like that really, if you're really passionate to host workshops or learn to new technologies or any other amazing ideas, if you guys have do be sure to put that in the suggestion form and also join the team. So I'll, I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have. Can you copy this code link? Uh, we can we can send the, this core link. I think okay has a Discord link, you can just send it. If, if anyone doesn't have any questions, we can get started with our guest lecture for today. No questions? Cool. So with that said, is Maxim here? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, oh great, Hopefully great, great. you can great. hear me. Yeah, yeah, amazing, thank you. With that said, um, I would like to invite our guest lecturer for today, Google developer expert, Maxim Lin. Uh, a quick introduction of Maxim. Maxim has worked as an independent developer and consultant since 2011 across the whole Android stack. He built from building custom versions of Android through to consumer apps published on Google Play. His current focus is on using Flutter as a productive tool for developing high quality mobile apps. So with that said, I'll pass it on to Max Sim. Uh, thanks. So I'm you can just having, share your screen. Uh, here we go. Oh, just have, getting my camera not to be too close to me. Um, cool. Let me just share. I'll just try and pick out, oh, where are we? The right. Hopefully you can see my slides. Yep, yep. Perfect. All right. Oh, thank you very much for giving me a chance to come along and talk to you about Flutter. It sounds like you've got a really exciting um, schedule for um, coming up for learning Flutter.
for everyone who's going to be participating. So hopefully I can give you a little bit of a flavour today of what Flutter is all about and what you can expect once you start um, writing your own Flutter apps. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, just really quickly a bit about myself, although that was a great introduction. So it's pretty much covered all the basics. So yeah, uh, like these days, I've been doing mobile development for around uh, 10 years on Android and last couple of years I've been doing uh, Flutter and recently I've become a Flutter GDE through my uh, work in the local Flutter community, which I'll spruik a bit later on um, for everyone to come along and join us or virtually at least uh, these days. Um, but yeah, like I'm really happy to be able to like sort of give you a bit of an intro about Flutter and hopefully have you join our Flutter community here in Melbourne. So I guess to start with, what is Flutter? For those of you who've like never heard of it or have only vaguely heard of it, uh, Flutter is like a app development uh, framework, but it's very different to others that you may have come across if you've heard of other things like say the native frameworks that come with Android and iOS or um, similar frameworks like uh, React Native. Um, the best way I tell people to think about Flutter is that it's a game engine for app development. And to explain why that is, I'll start covering the details of what um, Flutter involves um, in a minute. But like, yeah, if you keep that sort of at the back of your mind, that especially for people who have heard of perhaps um, things like uh, the Unity game engine, Think of Flutter uh, as being similar to that, but to let you build apps, mo uh, especially mobile apps versus uh, games. Now, the kind of key selling points for Flutter are very high velocity development. And I'll cover a bit more of the details, uh, what that means shortly, but it's really one of its big selling points is how it enables you to build apps really quickly and very easily. It's also a very expressive and flexible toolkit, which means that not only does it give you a good set of components with which to build your apps, but it also lets you compose them really easily and in very expressive ways. And it's flexible in that it, you can basically change whatever you want, literally whatever you want, not just within your app code, but also you can make changes all the way through the Flutter framework to customize it in whatever way you need. Like most people won't necessarily need to do that, but it's there and it's available. And it's actually quite uh, straightforward to do, especially compared to any other development framework, whether it be something like React Native or the existing OEM frameworks for Android, iOS, and etc. Now, Flutter started off as a uh, framework for building mobile apps for native iOS and Android apps, but as I'll talk about in a moment, it's really branched out since those beginnings. And when I said beginnings, that was only a few years ago, but Flutter's been moving really quickly. And these days it's now trying to essentially be a framework, a toolkit to, as the people from Google say, let you build apps wherever there are pixels to be painted. Any screen where you can paint pixels, that's where Flutter wants to be helping you build apps. Now, Flutter is really all about widgets. You will hear widgets nonstop everywhere. It's the really the ultimate key concept in Flutter, having widgets. Now, pretty much in Flutter, everything is essentially a widget. At least from the developer, app developer's point of view, you'll be able to treat most of your app as widget, or at least the UI part is all about widgets. Flutter, even though it's very much focused on the user interface, of um, your apps, it does, it's not limited to just the front end as it were, like Flutter lets you build the entire uh, app, mobile app or any other type of app, um, not just the UI. So in terms of the UI, the widgets are basically the end all and be all, but there's a lot more to it than that once you start building essentially the back end to your app. Now, everything in Flutter in terms of widgets is stateless by default. So what I mean by that is widgets by default are stateless, which means that essentially they're immutable and they have no state. They're recreated as needed every time a new frame is drawn on the screen. So what that means is that if you do need to have some state, you need to keep it either outside your widgets or you keep it 
uh, in within your widgets by having a subclass of uh, stateless widgets called stateful widgets, which delegate their state to a state class. Now, I don't want to get into too much details, but basically those are the kind of key concepts that your by default, your widgets are stateless. They don't maintain any state. If you need state, then, and often you do, then you either delegate that to a state object in a stateful widget, or you keep it outside of the widget itself. Now, the reason I'm going on about state for a little bit is that outside of widgets, state management is the other key concept that you will hear over and over again when you come to build Flutter apps. Like, there's a lot of different solutions for managing state in, in Flutter, but it's really important to know that it's, it's another key concept, that um, how you go about managing your state is very important when you build Flutter apps, much more so than if you were, say, doing it in uh, native Android or iOS development. And finally, like the reason that widgets are so important is that they're very heavily used. Everything is a widget. Unlike if, it, if anyone's come from a background or has tried doing some, um, for instance, Android program, which is what I'm most familiar with, you might be surprised to learn, or even if you're coming from, say, a web background and have done some work in web front end development, you'd be surprised to learn that even things like, for instance, padding or centering, um, uh, a, a widget in, a, in your UI is done by a widget. There is a center widget, there is a padding widget. So really all the concepts that you might be used to being basically attributes or properties of uh, your views or UI elements in other frameworks are essentially all classed as widgets in Flutter. And that does lead to very deep layout trees. So that's one thing to be aware of, but what you also should uh, know is that Flutter is excellent, absolutely excellent at managing very deep uh, trees of objects. So it's not something you should be afraid of. Like in Android development, for, we've always um, were uh, not so much uh, taught, but it was emphasized when you're doing Android development, not to have very deep hierarchies of views when you were building your Android apps. This is the complete opposite to Flutter. In Flutter, you're encouraged to do very deep um, hierarchy of uh, trees of widgets. Uh, but what you probably should keep in mind once you do pass, and that's probably something that you'll be taught as you um, progress through learning Flutter is that while all the examples normally have uh, very deep um, trees of widgets, nested widgets um, in a file, that's not really something that you should do once you start building anything more than little toy examples or toy apps. You still do follow kind of like uh, similar concepts that you would in other frameworks and you break things out into separate uh, files, into separate um, classes, because widgets are classes. But um, that doesn't mean that what you end up with is a very deep hierarchy, uh, sorry, very, keep saying hierarchy, very deep um, tree of widgets. But there are also very good tools, which I'll, I'll mention later on, that help you manage that in Flutter. Now, this is getting rather technical, so I'll skim over this very quickly, but basically uh, this is describing the Flutter stack. So this is what the framework is made up of. At the, at the top, you have uh, Material and Cupertino, which is uh, the widget sets for the Material Design System, and Cupertino stands for, of course, the iOS um, Human Interface, Interface Guideline. Um, so it's basically two sets of widgets that one follows a material uh, design system, which comes from Google, and the other one uh, is mimicking what uh, Apple does on iOS. And that's pretty much the layer that most of the time you'll be working with. But under that, there are essentially generic, the generic widgets. Uh, under them is the rendering um, part of the framework layer. Sorry, the rendering layer is part of the framework. Under that, then there's animation, painting, then there's the foundation layer, and then all of that is written in Dart, which is the language that Flutter apps are written in. I'll, I'll talk about Dart a little bit more shortly, but uh, I, underlying that is what is called the engine, which is written in C++, and that's essentially the way that uh, Flutter interfaces or gets uh, to draw onto the screen. It uses a, a, a library called Skia, which comes from, uh, well, came out of the Chrome project. Oops, 
sorry, back, which uh, of course everyone knows the Chrome browser. And so it's a very high performance uh, 2D rendering engine, though in fact it actually uses uh, OpenGL uh, underneath to draw to the screen. So this probably comes back to what I mentioned with Flutter being analogous to a game engine. From Flutter's point of view, unlike for instance, React Native, which makes use of the underlying views that are provided say by Android or iOS and essentially is binding to the underlying view. So when you display a button, say with React Native on Android, it's an Android button view or a list view and so forth. Flutter takes a very different approach. It essentially draws everything itself. So from Flutter's point of view, what it wants from the operating system is essentially a canvas. It just wants somewhere to be able to draw pixels and it wants to be given inputs. So like, you know, touch events, um, if you're not on a mobile device, it might be uh, mouse clicks, uh, text entry. So it just wants events from the operating system and it wants somewhere to draw. And that's really all it requires from the operating system. And that's roughly what um, the right hand side of the right hand side diagram is showing you is that a Flutter app talks to its host, whether it's Android or iOS, via asynchronous uh, channels to basically pass messages backwards and forwards, asking it to do things or receiving input from the operating system. But otherwise, Flutter just basically takes complete control of everything to do with drawing on the screen which means that there's no, unlike say for instance with react native there's no backwards and forwards from uh flutter your flutter code to the native uh, framework and back again as for instance you might be um doing react native when you're drawing a list view each item as it scrolls through has to first go into the javascript engine do whatever business logic is needed to figure out what to display for each item in a list. So say if you know scrolling through a uh, view on Facebook or Twi Twitter app or Facebook, like you know each one of those um, items in a list has to figure out what it needs to do to draw itself, which in a React Native app would be done inside the JavaScript engine, then it would go out to the native framework to draw it and then back again, backwards and forwards as things um, as you scroll through the list and need to figure out what needs to be drawn for each item. Uh, that's probably, I, I guess, enough um, going into, I didn't want to go into too much detail, but that hopefully gives you a flavor of how um, the Flutter uh, stack is set up and how it's different from uh, other uh, cross-platform frameworks. Now, when I previously mentioned high velocity development, I think the key things that that entails when you're talking about Flutter is like the ability to give you as a developer a way of creating your app, your project as quickly as possible. So for me, like the most important part of this is sub-second stateful hot reload. What that, it's a bit of a mouthful, but what it means, hot reload means that as you're working on the app, like you can see a little animation that's playing on the right hand side of this slide. It means you can be changing your code. You click save, Flutter detect, or your ID that you're using to build with Flutter detects that change, pushes out those changes into your app, and it does so without losing the state, the context that your app is in, which means that your code gets changed without actually resetting the app in any way. So if you were, say, two screens into say some a welcome uh, flow and you're trying to tweak say some colors or some text you do, every time you make those changes it won't go back to the start of your welcome sequence it'll stay right in that spot because it's preserving the state of your app as you make your code changes and that's huge in terms of a productivity win like there's this is one of the things that really um sold me on Flutter when I came across from native Android development is just the sheer speed that you can make changes and iterate on say your UI design or even like small uh, changes to your business logic and have it just basically appear straight away in your app. Not in, it's not a preview in your ID or anything. This is actually your running app on a um, emulator or physical uh, phone device. Now, there is also what they call hot restart, which is that kind of like reset the app, reset all the state of the app, which sometimes you do need. If you make a radical change 
like you might delete a particular class or you might make, might make such a big change that you can't really keep the state of the app as it is. And so for instance, in that code that's playing there, like you might remove the counter variable. So now there's nothing, you, you can't keep the UI that's there and still preserve the state without that actual variable being there. So those kind of things require a restart, but even then it's, it's a couple of seconds um, most of the time, which is again, a huge win compared with recomp like what you'd be, what I'd be used to on Android, which would be like the code gets recompiled and the whole application gets pushed out onto the d device again. There's also really nice tools. The UI inspector lets you basically look through that tree of widgets that I was talking about earlier. And the nice thing there is that you can actually get a really good visual representation of what your um, UI looks like in terms of that tree of widgets and also like how that relates to your code. And the great thing is, is that if you're dealing with some code that you might not be familiar with or that even that you yourself wrote a little while ago and you can't quite remember how it works, you can use the um, inspector to select any part of your UI and then have it jump to your to the code that is actually creating that part of the UI, which is again something that's just not even conceivable in native um, development and is super useful when you're trying to quickly navigate through um, an app's code base. The other key principles of Flutter and that it actually is shares with things like React is a reactive unidirectional flow. And this is a really big new thing. Like if you haven't heard of it, I really recommend that you um, Google around and learn a bit more about reactive unidirectional flow because this is really where client um, app development is heading, not just in terms of Flutter or React, but basically the whole industry is moving to this new paradigm because essentially it's one. People have found that this, is a, this paradigm is much better than the previous way we, we had for building uh, user interfaces. So you may have heard of um, Swift UI that's come from Apple. That's basically Apple's way of doing this reactive unidirectional uh, development for their native iOS apps. And Google has, um, also released about a year ago, Jetpack Compose, which is again, a very similar way of doing unidirectional reactive and what's called declarative UI programming. And if you actually look at Swift UI tutorials or Jetpack Compose tutorials, and you compare them to Flutter, you will find a large amount of similarity. It's not completely the same thing, but they are very, very similar. And actually, if you've ever done any um, React uh, development on the web, you'll find but are very familiar as well because they all share the same uh, paradigm of building uh, UIs. The nice thing with Flutter, of course, compared with like say Swift UI or Jetpack Compose is that it's a single code base that's covering both platforms. So you don't have to write a native Android app and a native uh, iOS app. What Flutter gives you is a way of writing one code base that covers both platforms and it does so it, without um, much in the way of compromises because you still keep that native look and feel that people criticize, for instance, um, web apps that try to do, that, that, that try to basically bring the web development experience to mobile apps. But the problem was that they didn't fit in with the native platforms. And the nice thing with Flutter is that they made a excellent, um, amount of progress in terms of having the widget sets match the the built-in um, user interfaces. So especially Material, Flutter actually supported Material 2.0 before Android's uh, native libraries did. And the Cupertino widget set was a little bit lagging, lacking at first, but um, recently they've done a huge amount of improvements on it and it's really um, catching up in terms of matching the native UI um, views that come with iOS, that come built into iOS. Um, with building apps for Android iOS, like this is one thing that often people have been somewhat um, not so keen on using uh, third party frameworks like React Native and Flutter is that they consider these not to be native 
apps when you were doing it this way. But the, what happens with Flutter is that essentially from, I guess, a very uh, objective point of view, a Flutter app is a native app. It doesn't use the, um, what, they, what you'd call the OEM view classes, the built-in view um, code that comes on Android or iOS. But other than that, it's a native app. It, it, in fact, it compiles down to native ARM code that both iOS and Android de devices use. So while it might be drawing its own user interface, like I said, like a game would, otherwise, these are fully pre-compiled native apps, just like, for instance, a, ge a game that you might be playing on your Android or iOS phone is a native app, even though it doesn't use any of the user interface elements that you might see in other apps on, on your phone. The other, th other thing is that uh, what the Dart language brings to Flutter, and a lot of people ask, like, why Dart? Like, why is, aren't, we, aren't they using JavaScript? Why aren't they using uh, Kotlin or Swift or some other language? The nice thing that, the, the nice feature set that Dart brings to Flutter is the fact that while we, you're developing, it runs in interpreter or JIT uh, mode, just in time mode, to let you develop quickly and have functionality like Hot Reload. When you actually build your apps for release into the App Store or Google Play Store, it compiles down to native ARM code, as I said. So what you get is fast development uh, experience, but also a very performant native compiled code in the apps that you release. You're not sacrificing performance um, by getting that fast uh, development experience as you would, for instance, with say React Native, where it's still um, a JavaScript engine embedded in your app that's in either interpreting or just in time compiling the JavaScript, but it's also having to go over like a bridge to talk to the framework. So you are sacrificing somewhat performance to get that nice across platform rapid development experience. In Flutter, you don't have to pay that penalty. You don't have to make that sacrifice. And so things like 60 frames per second running GPU accelerated, so not sucking up all your battery because it's rendering on the CPU is basically part and parcel of Flutter apps. Now, in terms of graphics, this is where, again, the comparison with a game engine is quite apt in that like Flutter apps can be really beautiful UI designs. And really at, what they like to say is that it's only limited by your imagination. Like Flutter gives you a very powerful 2D engine that's running on the GPU of your device, whether it's your phone or tablet. And what it means is that you can create really beautiful custom UIs rapidly, but also very performant. So you get both a good development experience and you get the ability to have really smooth, beautiful UIs. And because everything's in Flutter, and everything's like in Dart, you're not having to worry about, like say you might with React Native about trying to write native code to customize. So you want a very bespoke widget, like you don't want to just use a regular button or a regular slider. You want to have a very um, beautiful custom design. You, you can do that in Flutter, staying completely within the Flutter framework, writing the same Dart code that you would if you were just using the standard widgets because the whole of that um, part of the framework is just written in Dart. You're not going out to the native um, frameworks views and trying to write Java or Kotlin or Swift code to try and customize your views. You can do all of that staying within Flutter and keeping all the benefits of the Flutter um, experience in terms of development. And finally, it's like I said, Flutter's um, graphics engine, Skia, uses OpenGL on Android and Metal now on iOS um, as of a couple of versions ago to get really good performance out of your device. So the rendering is done using the GPU and not the CPU, which really helps in terms of power consumption and not draining a user's battery to get these really nice, beautiful UIs. Talking about tooling and performance platforms like I've gone on about how good the developer experience is. The other nice thing that I should mention about Flutter is that 
you can use both Android Studio or VS Code. I actually used Android Studio for a while and then have been using VS Code a lot, despite being um, quite an old time Android developer, because both IDEs, both, well, VS Code is more text editor than an IDE, but it's a very powerful one and both provide an excellent experience. Like I'd highly recommend either one as um, very, very good tools for your flood development. Plus, there's also the command line. Um, if, if you prefer that, there's also a set of command line tools that let you do pretty much everything you want on the command line and use even a different editor if you so choose. But like the experiences in Android Studio and VS Code are really, really well done and very polished and uh, are really are a joy to use compared to other things I've done in the past. And even though Android and iOS were the kind of two first platforms that Flutter supported, and so they're the most stable and well supported. Flutter has, as I said, branched out recently. So now the web support is in, is in beta. So a lot of apps, especially ones that don't have like much in the way of integration with mobile specific things, like for instance, they're not trying to use um, Bluetooth or um, integrate in other parts that of the framework that are only available on say Android or iOS. Um, can essentially run almost as is on the web, just by basically by being recompiled for the web output instead of Android and iOS. And more recently still, desktop support has come along. Um, Mac OS is already um, in alpha, or, or actually I think it's in beta now, sorry. And Linux support um, it, for the desktop is now in alpha. Windows support is kind of like in development preview mode. Uh, but even those, pretty immature um, implementations are already quite usable. Like I'm actually doing some um, personal projects using um, the Linux desktop support and it's been working really well so far. So even in the very early stages, you can already build your apps, not just for Android, not just for iOS and not just for the web, but also you can target say uh, Mac desktop users or Linux desktop users and soon Windows desktop users, all from the single code base. You just basically need to make a few little tweaks in your um, build setup, and you can support all those platforms from a single code base. Finally, this ecosystem is very important for any framework that you choose to use. And here, Flutter like started off small, but has really come along in leaps and bounds recently. Uh, if any of you have done node development, you probably know about NPM and the node modules, like Flutter um, uses Dart. So it has a site called pub.dev where packages are published. And as it says there, there's been 7,000 new pack publish packages published just over the last uh, year. I'm not sure how many are in there, but it's a huge number and it already covers most of the functionality you, you might want to use in your Flutter apps. The Play Store, Flutter usage has absolutely exploded. It's 90,000 plus um, as of, I think, last month. But that compares with, I think it was 50,000 in the middle of the year. So it's really an exponential kind of growth curve that um, Flutter is experiencing in terms of its use in apps that are already going out to um, the Play Store. I, I assume, like, Google doesn't have th th these stats came from an, an article written by uh, one of the members of the Flutter team. So I assume that Google emphasizes the Play Store because they don't really have um, access to the statistics on the App Store. But given the cross platform nature of Flutter, I'd assume that a large number of the apps that have gone into a Play Store have a similar version in Apple's App Store. And of course, Flutter itself is open source. There are hundreds of com contributors to the Flutter framework itself, to the Flutter engine. And like that's one of its strengths is that it's not something that um, Google is by itself is driving. Like a lot of people wor have worried in the past, oh, is this something that Google has just come up with and they're going to ditch um, next year and it's all going to go away well no there's a huge community around this including people who are working on the framework themselves so even without google th this is something that now has a life of its own and like there's a huge now investment by people all around the world in the flutter ecosystem and the community so it it's really like here to stay now whether or not um google's contributing to it 
Although I should say that Google themselves have said that things like their um, ads app and a lot of internal apps are using Flutter already. Their new Stadia app um, is using Flutter. So they themselves are very invested in, in using Flutter as well. So this is definitely something that um, is, is here for the long term. So basically where Flutter is at the moment, the 1.20 release is out. So Flutter went stable, like it's amazing. It's only been about a year and a half since Flutter actually came out of beta and became a stable production release. So it really actually is, still surprises me even like how quickly things have moved in um, the Flutter space. The stable channel, which is what Google suggests people use, um, has a release roughly every quarter now. The, there are things like platform view, so you get things like Google Maps, or if you need a web view in your app, these are all uh, now available. And I think um, they're all now stable. They were previously in beta, but I think they, these are all now stable. Um, if you need to set up um, continuous integration, continuous deployment, like which I highly recommend, even for small um, personal projects, there's a free service called Code Magic that's Flutter specific, which is makes absolutely a breeze to set up CI/CD um, and to fully automate building your app and pushing it out into um, Google Play and the App Store. If you're uh, very graphically inclined, there's an excellent um, vector animation tool called Rive, which I think is web-based from memory, which can output directly to Flutter as as well. So you can get some really nice. Um, beautiful animations going, being ready to use in your, directly in your Flutter app. The workflow um, is also available, probably not so much relevant um, for you guys, but there's also um, a well-documented workflow to get Flutter views into an existing Android and iOS app. So if you had an existing mobile app um, and you wanted to add Flutter to just some part of it, there's um, the support to do that now. And finally, there's a big new, I, I didn't talk a lot about the details of Dart, um, but suffice to say, its its philosophy was to make it easy for people coming from any similar language like Java, Kotlin, Swift, C, JavaScript. It, they, it was intended to basically be as easy as possible for people coming from those other languages to pick up. So it really is like something that I found people pick up very quickly, literally in a matter of days or a week or so. Um, if they, especially if they have experience with any of those other languages. But one big new feature that's about to come out is something called null safety, which um, is currently in tech preview, but um, depending on how long your course goes for, you might actually be using in stable version of Flutter by the end of this year. And the nice thing with null safety is it's quite an advanced feature that really improves the quality and safety of your code. And, is only available really in a few languages, um, like and to the extent that it's um, being done in Dart is really only comparable to what's available in Swift. Um, there's similar functionality in Kotlin. I think TypeScript also has something similar, but really it, this is a big um, boost to developers' productivity, especially in writing robust uh, apps and robust code so hopefully within the next few months this will be available for you to use in your flutter apps and will, should make a big improvement in terms of how um the, how well your apps work in terms of uh their robustness and like not um in being able to cope with errors and not having as many errors so i mentioned that there were quite a few resources out there because there's a big ecosystem. Some of them I want to just quickly highlight. Flutter.dev and Dart.dev are the two sites which are just absolutely packed with all the documentation that you could possibly want. There's Flutter.dev especially has really great set of tutorials, articles, um, resource and other resources, um, documentation for all the classes, the APIs. So really, definitely um, a place you'll be spending a lot of time on if, you, if you're doing Flutter development. Uh, if, if you want to get started really quickly, dartpad.dev gives you actually an online sandbox um, that you can use to just basically try out little um, pieces of uh, Dart and Flutter code 
online without having to install anything. Uh, one thing I haven't added is more recently, uh, for those of you who have heard of CodePen, CodePen now supports fun as well, so you can do the very same thing. And you can see some really wonderful examples that people have already made of some really nice um, UI examples of Flutter and it running on CodePen. There's free courses. Of course, you guys will be learning through your own course, but there's free courses on Udacity and at Brewery, for those of you who want to um, do those. There's a huge amount of resources on YouTube. The Flutter team themselves have done an introduction series. They've got a thing called The Boring Show, which are really in-depth um, videos on specific issues to do with Flutter development. There's, I highly recommend going through Widget of the Week, which are these short two, three minute videos, which will just highlight one particular widget because there's just so many widgets. I, there's like dozens and dozens of widgets that come with Flutter. And if you just get to know at least a few, a handful or two of those, that'll make a really big difference to how quickly you can build your Flutter apps. Finally, like I wanted to spruik our local Melbourne uh, Flutter meetup community. Of course, um, in these lockdown times, we're not physically meeting up, but we've been having some um, online events and we're planning to have more. And also we have a very active, um, Slack, which because we're kind of like an offshoot of the ANZ of the Melbourne GDG, the Melbourne Developer um, Group, so we're there in the Flutter channel in the GDG Slack. I really recommend that it, um, everyone who wants to comes along and joins. Um, and in terms of the uh, Flutter and uh, the Flutter Google team themselves, they have their own Git uh, Gitter channel, or actually multiple Gitter channels. Uh, where you can jump on and discuss uh, or ask questions um, about Flutter. There's heaps more resources. There's Slack groups that you'll be able to find, um, heaps of blogs, websites, just lots and lots of resources. So, um, yeah, there's no shortage of documentation or people um, that you can ask about. Flutter. And, of course, Stack Overflow is brimming full of um, Q&A on everything to do with Flutter. Um, I think I may have taken up a bit more of my time uh, than I was supposed to. So thank you very much for coming along. Um, I don't know if there's any questions or if there's time for questions, but otherwise feel free to ping me on Twitter. Um, there's, I'm also on GitHub, but it, it, it's um, it, you can see some example projects I've got on there. Or yeah, just reach out to me in the GDG Slack. And yeah, hopefully I'll catch up with some of you in person in the future once we can have physical meetups. Thanks very much. Max, and there's some um, questions in the chat. I'll just quickly read them out. Oh, here. yeah. Sorry, I haven't been able to see them because... Oh, good, oh, good. So one question is, what if we change the back end? Does it show that change too? Uh, yes. And so, yeah. So if you have a back end, for instance, you might have um, some code that's reading... Oh, I don't know. Like, say you've got some code that's doing some calculation. Like, say you're doing a mortgage uh, app and you, you're doing some calculations in your back end to display like sample mortgage rates and um, like years to pay off the mortgage. If you make a change to that formula, that will be reflected. If your back end, for instance, hits an API, uh, unless your change um, is going to also change the UI that causes that API to be hit, that won't happen. But like I said, then in that case, it, you'd need to do a restart and it's like a couple of seconds to do what's called a hot restart. You'll lose the state, but then it'll do whatever you need to do, like go out and hit a REST API or read um, SQLite database on your device, whatever your backend is doing to get the data that needs to show it in the user interface. And one more question we had is, do you think Flutter will replace technology such as, such as React Native and Android in the future? <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't go so far to say it's replaced. Like the thing is, um, it's kind of like in software engineering, it's very much a question of picking the right tools for the right job. So for instance, if you've already got an app with um, built with React Native, unless you've got, for instance, performance issues, or um, other reasons why it's not working out for you, there's no reason to go and rewrite it in Flutter. And likewise with native apps, like um, there's not really any, unless there's a particular reason, like for instance, I did work with a client um, last year who did have two native apps and they wanted to combine that into a single code base. So that along with like wanting to do a much richer UI in terms of the design meant that it made sense to redo um, the app in Flutter. But 
for instance, there's no um, reason why they can't coexist because they kind of cover different use cases. So for people who have a big investment um, in say native Android development, like it's most likely what's going to happen in the future is they will progressively migrate to Jetpack Compose because, and likewise on iOS, they'll go to Swift UI, which basically bring a lot of the benefits of Flutter in terms of that reactive declarative um, UI development, that very fast um, development uh, velocity that you get. But um, it, they get to keep all their investment in the existing native um, code bases that they already have. What they don't get is, of course, the cross-platform um, capabilities of Flutter. So for, for you guys, if you're starting and building an app right now, like you next week, you're going to go, you're going to do some tutorials and then you want to start building your app. I think it makes excellent sense to build a brand new app in Flutter because you're not having to go and build one code base for iOS, another one for Android, possibly another one for the web. You, you don't have any existing investments that you need to sort of like um, le leverage you can basically make the best use of Flutter by starting from scratch. And in that scenario, it makes excellent sense that Flutter does replace, say, native development, not in terms of replacing it because there's no use for it, but just because for someone who wants to do a hobby project or do a proof of concept that they might be doing for a potential startup, they, they want, you want to get something done quickly and cover all the platforms as easily as possible with the least amount of time and effort. And, for well, that, Flutter is perfect. Great, thank you so much. I don't think there's any more questions, but thank you so much for that amazing tour of Flutter. I really enjoyed it. Like we actually went into like all the depths of Flutter and I hope it also inspired lots of people in the chat. So thank you so much, Maskim. No worries, thank you very much for having me. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to hopefully meeting you guys and to seeing all the great Flutter apps that you'll be building in the future. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>